All right, so this is part three on my deer hair popper tying video series. Okay, here's my tailing section that I tied up earlier. So it's always good before you get started to have your color combinations in mind, which you want to start off with. And, and I'm lucky I've, got, I've done several of these. So I usually use something as a model that I can have next next door to me to make sure I keep my colors in order. I don't get out of order. If you got out of order, it's not that big of a deal. The fish won't mind. But if you do not have one of these laying around, there are pictures all over the internet. You can find a color combination that you like, and that's what you go ahead and tie with. So I'm gonna be using orange, yellow, a, a green, sometimes called a Kelly green, and a black dot. So some of this video, when I edit it, you'll see later, I'm gonna speed up the process. But to begin with, I want to get a thread base down, and I want to make sure that that is um, secured all the way across my hook. The way I do that is, is I get a little bit of this gel, super glue gel, put it on the top of the hook, okay? And I'm going to use that to secure my thread. That gives me a base by which all my wraps will be secured to. And I'll show you why in a second. But wrap it all the way up to the eye of the hook. Close up the eye of the hook by wrapping enough threads here enough that nothing could slip in between and get stuck in there, okay? Then I come back and make a loose to or wide open spiral wraps in the back. Now I'm set to go. Okay. Next thing I do is I start working on the tail. The tail section is the only section I'm going to need to get my tips aligned correctly. Okay. So all the tips on this back section I want to be aligned pretty close to each other. So the way I do that is I start with my bottom color. In this case, it's going to be orange. And I grab just enough to get a chunk out like this. Okay. I'm going to stop talking and just go. Clean out the fur in between. Drop it in my Magnum, Peak Magnum stacker. Sorry if that's too loud. All right, now here I'm going to trim off this back end to keep all the butt ends in line. Now, watch carefully how I do this, because this is how you do the whole fly, okay? I'll start about right there. I'm going to do two, two wraps, and I'm going to pull down and turn so this ends up on the bottom. See? That's called spinning. It's a combination of spinning and stacking. And here's where the bodkin comes in. I'm going to turn this around real quick so you can see. The hair gets stuck behind the hook. A lot of times you don't see this when you watch other video videos. So what I do is, is I come back behind that and pick that out. So I get a more even distribution hope that that works but hopefully you get the, the idea I want an even distribution of my orange on both sides of the bottom okay from there I'm going to go yellow and I only want a small bit of yellow on this one so I'm not gonna grab as much 
the bottom should be your, your thickest, thickest part, okay? There's my brush out the under fur. I'm also going to pick out some of the longer ones. I put that into my <coughs> stacker. Okay. Trim again. Look at that. This will go right on top and center it. Try one, two. By the way, this is my GSP thread, so I can pull down fairly hard without it breaking the thread. I want to keep my deer hair from spinning as much as I can. I have not mastered that yet now, and it still spins lots of times. All right, continue with my green. Trying all the while to keep everything centered on that hook. So you don't end up with one color this way, one color that way. Two wraps. Push it down. Last color, my black. Since the black is the top color, it will double over on itself. <clears throat> so it does not have to be as that was important you got to pack this all in okay so I start off by pushing back with my hand and then I get my tool, the fugly packer, and push this back. All right? Now, remember this pattern. Pull my, my thread up to the front. Two wraps, one, two, and then two half hitches with my very expensive hash hit, half hitch tool. One, two. Push that back, advance the thread, two, two good clean wraps up there, and then head cement to secure this. This is, if you watched my first video, this is a loom um, water-based cement. Next batch. A thicker, I grab a thick enough clump of the orange, okay, because the top three colors should equal, quote unquote, the same thickness of the bottom three. And you'll hear people say use a pencil length. <clears throat> pencil length, in my opinion, is too thin. So I try to use something that's more like the, the thickness of a, one of these permanent markers. That's about the thickness I'm aiming for. Okay, clean out the under fur. Now, this is where I taught myself how to trim with my left hand. Hold it like this and trim the butt ends off. 
I'm putting it down there because I got the garbage can to collect my mess. Okay, find the center, and this is again will be the, the stack that gets spun. One, two, and then let it spin all the way around. Use your bodkin or a pair of scissors, whatever you want to try to get that over and this under the hook. By doing that, tries to get everything even. Don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to get everything even on both sides. All right. Push down and repeat that same process. Yellow. Not as thick as the orange. Brush out down the fur. I'll get you over here so you can see. Brushing out. Pull out any extras. Trim butts over my garbage can so I don't make a mess on my floor. Hold this down, centered over the hook. One, two. Push down so it doesn't spin on me. And now I've got the second color. You go third color, green. Clean that out. Trim. I'm using uh, d hair scissors to trim this, by the way, and not your regular pair. I'm trying to find the same groove that I used. And then the last color is black. Ah. Small piece of the black, because that's the quote unquote dot on top of the thing. down and up on the dot so it goes straight up. Push. Get my thread out the way. Ugly packer. Pack it hard. I've already gotten one so this is my second wrap there. A half hitch to keep it in place. Advance my thread and secure with glue. Head cement glue. I use a water base so I don't have to smell uh, any fumes. I'm going to one more clump here. Making sure that the blacks are all lined up. Okay. All right. So this last group of orange I put in, I spun. I want the head of my popper to look like that, orange. So when I'm fishing this, I see orange, and, and I know that I'm coming. Nothing's up upside down or anything. So I like seeing that orange. So this last color combination is just going to be plain old orange. I'm not going to put any yellow, green, or black in. So I put a nice thick... 
grouping uh, bunch down at the bottom and spun that. Now I'm going to stack one more bunch of hair, also an orange. And you could vary this. You may want a yellow face on your popper, but I'm doing an orange face on my popper. I like orange faces. I can see it well in, in dirty water or sometimes when you get windy conditions and the, uh, you know, you get a lot of ripples on the surface, I can see what's going on. I've noticed that not every fish is going to explode on this thing. Sometimes they just gulp it under. And you just see that orange just kind of like disappear. And that is so cool. And you set the hook and have fun. Come on, baby, get in there. That's it. All right. Pushing that back. Once more, Bugby Packers. To get it back. Okay. Now, here... I do a series of double half hitches. One, two. Push back pretty hard to keep it locked in. Earlier I talked about the importance of that thread base, putting glue, and then coming back with spiral wraps. That gives me something to grip when I, when I use these. Okay, if you can use your imagination. I'm using this. I'm pushing this on the hook, okay? If that hook is smooth, it's just going to come right back out. But because I laid down a good base of thread and used spiral wraps to get back, when I push this back hard, better chance that my knot's going to hold and not slip forward again. This next section is how I finish the, the, the fly so that I have a nice clean head and nothing slips or breaks. I want this thing to last. Yeah, and I can, I've caught two dozen fish on one of these poppers before I've had to retire before which is pretty cool. Uh, don't know that you can do that with a lot of other uh, flies that you tie. All right, so I make these plastic out of pretty, pretty hard, stiff plastic. I push, get a hole in the middle, push that over my hook, and then I turn, locks it in place. Push back one more time, just to get that back, and I hold it there. Now I come back with some regular 210 denier, and I'm using this in an orange color, of course, because I want to demonstrate. Get my thread started. Push back. Okay, I'm gonna make a thread dam to keep all that hair from wanting to come back toward the eye of the hook. I'm gonna stop in a second and show you what it looks like. Turn that off. Didn't quite get it all. Okay, can you see that right there? All right. And so I will continue to wrap to make a big enough thread down. Okay. And now I'm going to whip finish that. I have learned over the years of doing this to always do more than one set of whip finishing. In case the first one comes off when I pull this plastic off or I get enough fish that hit it, I got three different sets of knots on there. Okay, same thing. Just sit there and hold that, push, and it cuts my thread perfectly. Undo this, take this off without undoing my threads, and now I've got, okay. Next step is just to put some glue on that, let it dry, and then we're ready for the trimming. So I've got some head cement. There's thread wraps. I 
let this sit for some time before I start trimming. Trimming will be the next section. 